Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. Grandma, how have you been? Well, I've been good. I've been avoiding the city a little bit because it's been so terribly hot, but it's been hot out east as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've had a nice week. I had some people over for lunch. Um, As you put on your, I saw on your Instagram feed, I made a very good salad (laughs) with cranberries and walnuts that you had to describe, but it was very good. Everybody enjoyed lunch. And um, so I've been having a nice time, a little bit of... uh, doing TikToks with you. Yeah. Well, I love that everyone's watching our TikToks. So many people have come up to us on the street or out at restaurants. And I love that because they're all like, oh, it reminds me of my grandma. So that's always really cute. Yes, it's very sad. It's very satisfying to both of us. I was in the Hamptons this weekend as well. We went to an event at Bandier that Tinks, one of the influencers, was at. Grandma didn't know her, but I love following her. And you thought she was really nice. Yes, she was very nice. They did a great job at the store. And people were taking pictures of us. So that was also fun. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we've put out some fun TikToks this week that people had different reactions to. Um, One was going through your your refrigerator (laughs) and people said it was way better than mine, I guess. Well, it was better than yours since you have nothing in it, (laughs) in yours, except for a little bit of rice pudding and some old sushi. But um, you know what? It's fine because in the summer, you don't need to keep a lot of stuff. Half the time, you're never home. So it doesn't really matter. But we're having fun with the refrigerator uh, conversation. And they were like, oh, you have good taste in jam. The apricot (laughs) jam is very important. My favorite. Uh, Another TikTok we did this week was you going window shopping in town and kind of critiquing all of the store windows and it, whether you liked the outfits or not. My problem with the store is, is there's nothing for, for me to put wear in, in those stores that are in the windows. But some of them were very colorful and fun. And, um, you know, I guess uh, if you're going to a, an animal party or some kind of wild well, pool supposed to be party. Like what about just every day? Well, I don't think any of those outfits in the windows were for every day out here. Everyone's sort of wearing jeans and, and T-shirts. so But they're fun. It's fun to look at and fun to keep uh, your eye open for the newest trends. That's right. Okay, let's talk about our guest for this week. Her name is Jean Ketchum. She is a woman in her 80s living dangerously and freely, and she just has amazing energy, and we're happy to have a guest that is closer in your age group than mine. She is inspirational, and I think for those who will listen to this podcast, they will really see how life just can begin at cert- at, uh, as you turn 60, 70, or 80, and uh, it's never too late to do experiences that you're a little nervous about. Um, As long as uh, you've got an open mind, you can do anything. Okay, so we hope you like the episode. Okay, you guys, we are joined by Jean Ketchum. She started Aging But Dangerous, which is a free Facebook group and also a paid inner circle membership for women over 50, living life to the fullest, redefining aging, having fun and looking good. Jean, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jean. This is so great. I love it. I'm finally seeing people my own age on this podcast. So this is I, great. I know. Well, I'm so excited to be with the both of you because, oh my gosh, I mean, I, I have... I'd love to be doing something with my granddaughter. So that's pretty, pretty darn exciting. It's, for both it's been you. great. It's been an eye opener. And yeah. it all all came about, unfortunately, during COVID. But but we're making yeah. the best of it now. Well, we're, we've always our relationship's been the same yeah. since day one. But yeah. the recording of it all is yeah. recent. <laughs> That's right. yeah. great. I love it. I love it. Thank you. So we ask all of our guests to start with their age, where they're from or living now and their current relationship status. Well, I am in Minneapolis and I'm 82 and um, I just celebrated my 60th wedding anniversary. Oh, congrats. That's fabulous. Finally, someone has grandma beat. Yeah, I'm only going to be 59. So she beat me by a year. That's for sure. Well, you know what I say about that is it's, yeah, congratulations being married that long. But the real congratulation is if you've been married that long and you're still happy. Hmm. Or yeah. that you yeah, still exactly. like each other. Still like that's each the, other. Exactly. Yeah, that's the congratulation too. part. You know? Yeah. Do you have any secrets to a long-term marriage? Oh my gosh, I do. 
yeah, you just have to, we just let each other be who we are. And we mm -hmm. always say, we got married right out of college and we just are, we are who we are. And um, it's, and we support each other in every single thing we do. I've always had my own business, businesses and he's had his, and we just, you know, you just gotta be your own person. You can't, I, you will hear me say this all the time. You cannot box in somebody. I don't want to be boxed in. So, and when we got married, I said, you know, I don't want to be Mrs. And I don't want to be wife. Oh, wow. I don't want to be any of that stuff. And I was very independent 60 years ago and, um, and still am, but, it, and he just accepted that. I mean, I, well, that's I what he liked probably in you. Yeah, that is what he liked because mm -hmm. he had a mother that was very dependent and he was, you know, yeah, he liked that. But yeah, I was very, very independent, and uh, and so it's worked. And but you we, had a family. Am I? Am I not mistaken? I have a daughter. We had an only have an only child. Okay, she's fifty four. Okay, all and right. She's in Chicago, and I have two wonderful granddaughters. Uh, uh, so it's that, all girls. You have no grandson to to give kisses to. <laughs> Just I all know, granddaughters. All right. But um, I had uh, she. They're fifteen and eighteen. So, oh, so they are the different. I think, I mean, Kim, I think you really have to work at being a grandparent. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just it you you have to make sure you're in touch and that you're connected and all that. Do yeah. you think mostly because you want to stay in touch with your own grandchildren or like what society kind of I feel like there's always a pressure to like no. stay and be young? No, no, no I don't, think I don't ever go by what society right. wants. <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, it's strictly because I want to be in their life mm -hmm. and uh i want to be and i keep thinking you know i want to live i mean i've got to live my dad lived to be 105 so i am programming myself to live okay. a long time it sounds and, like my husband says yeah, the same and, thing his father lived to 104 and he's planning to do the same i said good luck to you <laughs> but anyway so because i want to see these young women you know i want to uh -huh. see them develop and grow into you know wonderful women and I it's yeah it's very exciting yeah, yeah. So. since you do have that independence from really your whole life how do you instill that in your daughter and then also now your granddaughters well I tell you um I learned a lesson back in my 30s I I met this really good friend who was 25 years older than I was and she had a clothing store and she's I eventually bought her clothing store. So I was, had my own store. Um, but anyway, one day we're it's in St. Louis one day where she served champagne every day, one glass, you know, to each right. customer. But anyway, so we, nobody was coming in, it was snowing or something. It was awful weather. And she was, you know, we were having a glass of champagne. And I said, Audrey, I said, do you ever, are you ever sorry that you started this? I mean, is it like, you know, and she looked at me and she said, listen, honey, when the day comes that I don't like my life, that's the day I change it. And I remembered that I was like 35 years old. That was hard in those days to do something like that. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I remembered that and I raised my daughter that way. In fact, they did a, a documentary on me uh, last year, a couple of years ago. And my daughter, they interviewed my daughter and um, I didn't know, of course, I had no idea what she's going to say. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's like, who, what are they going to say about you? Mm -hmm. But um, that's one thing she said. She's the one thing I learned about my mother was, my life isn't going the way it's you know supposed to go then i'm the one that has to change it because mm -hmm. nobody else can change it for you so yeah i just raised her with a um just you know being able to take care of herself and being able to you know just independent and just i, I don't know mm -hmm. that's just the way i've always been so yeah that's so nice see it's interesting because I believe in the same thing. I wasn't as lucky. I never had a job. So I always worked. I was always a housewife, basically, and, and raised the children. But I did regret that I didn't have a career. And I, now I'm working at 80 years old, which I didn't do when I was 30. So and it's fun. Of course, I'm working with somebody I love and I'm uh, right. there's no pressure right. except from this boss that I have occasionally. <laughs> but um, I, I do think it's important to, to be a, have a good self image, whether oh, yeah. you're you're working or even if it's in the home. I, I don't yeah. I think it's it's all it depends on the relationship between the man and the woman or the two women or the two men, whatever it is, whatever 
whatever their relationship is, it should be defined and not, you know, you shouldn't feel frustrated. Not everybody has to have a path, uh, right. you know, the same path. So right. um, what I found now, as I'm getting older, um, I do a lot more with my girlfriends because we, we enjoy theater. We enjoy it. We have a commonality. We like to play bridge together. We, we do things. We travel together occasionally and do an art trip. We, so I do think there is life after each stage you just oh it's different, definitely right yeah. I mean don't you think definitely that? yeah and I told my daughter from the time I, I swear to you from the time she was three years old probably and I had a happy marriage I mean her dad mm -hmm. and I never fought I mean mm -hmm. uh you know I remember when we were young somebody said once to me they said well you've got to fight you if you want to have a good marriage you got to fight because yeah. you know that's and I went home and told Mike I said well I told him and he said well what are we going to fight about? And I said, I don't know, but we better maybe think <laughs> make something. up something. <laughs> but yeah. I always said to her, you know, always her whole life, you've got to be able to take care of yourself. Don't expect some man to do it for you. Mm. You've got to be able to take care yeah, of yourself. Because you so don't know. I told her that all the time. And I, I don't know. I sometimes I think I raised her to be too independent, but boy. Does she know. have a career of sorts? Yes. At yeah. From, okay. Yeah, so yeah. she's, she's set. She's happy. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. She's very independent and, you know, studied abroad and did all kinds of things that a lot of girls early for her age that they wouldn't have done. And right. so, yeah. Did you but, ever, since we are a dating podcast, did you ever give her or now your granddaughters any dating advice? Well, only the 18 year old. Yeah. <laughs> um, w well, I don't think so. I don't think so, but she didn't get married till she was 36. Oh, and um, uh, and she really wanted to have a, a, Korea. a baby child. And so I said to her, I mean, she was thinking about going to sperm bank and and some of my friends and I said, we're all for it. Your dad and I are absolutely 100 percent. will back you. And we have a whole village of people that mm -hmm. will help raise a child. And one of my friends said, well, how does that make you feel? Her having a baby and not being married. I said, I could care less. Right. I don't go, you know. I didn't, Mike and I didn't wear wedding rings when we got married. We just have, I've never gone that whole married thing. You know, it's like, you just don't need, when she was 16, she got all upset because we weren't wearing wedding rings. And I'm like, why does that upset you? Well, because how's anybody going to know you're married? And I said, they know. He said, well, who cares if they, I mean, <laughs> come on, you know, we don't care. So as long as you know, exactly, yeah, exactly. exactly. I so, never wore had a wet, we didn't exchange rings either. Oh, you know, what's interesting. Yeah. That's when very interesting. Um, I never really think about that, but on TikTok the other day, I think someone was like, where's her wedding ring? And I, I never, never realized that you don't wear one. I don't have one. I mean, I have wedding bands that I bought, but we, yeah. we uh, I think I exchanged my, I put my mother's ring on to get married. I had a gold ring, uh, yeah. a little circle ring, but I never gave Poppy a, a ring. And, um, we all everybody knew we yeah. were married it really didn't but matter. i guess it's like whatever makes you exactly. comfortable in your own relationship like yeah. there's no one way to go exactly. about i it. think that was a lot of the jewelry business also pushed those exchange of rings probably it's yeah. like valentine's yeah. day yeah. yeah you know that kind of yeah. thing with the roses yeah yeah and grandma you touched on this a second ago of saying like maybe not having a little bit of regrets of like not having worked until now um gene do you live with any regrets I don't think she does. <laughs> the only regret, I was asked this, I, I've only been asked that one time, which is interesting because I've been interviewed a lot on TV and, and everything. And this one, um, in fact, he was a cameraman and he said to me, he says, do you have any regrets? And I said, the only regret I have in my life was, is that I spent way too much time worrying about my weight. Oh, hmm. I always said, you know, I told Mike when we got married and I weighed 110 when I got married, but I said, I'm telling you, if I, I I'm going to end up in a mental institution because I'm 10 pounds overweight. I mean, right. you know, it was just way too much energy. And it's that exactly what so many people have said that you talk to women, they'll go like, oh, you know, I thought it was really, really fat until I saw this picture of me. And I, you know, years, 20 years ago, and I thought, oh my gosh, I really looked good. And I'm like, what a shame that we didn't enjoy wasted. ourselves then and right. thought we were like, you know, well, that was because there was body, body, no, but that's body shaming. So relatable. Like, I feel like so much of what we talk about all the time is, oh, why did I eat that extra ice cream? Oh, now, like, you know, I'm going to have to buy a size bigger. It's like, who really cares? But a lot right. of the time, it's just so much of our 
like mental state. And so that's really good advice to maybe stress about that a little bit less. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the reason you young people, I think aren't as bad with it is because you see yourself all the time on the internet, on the podcast, you know, you see yourself everywhere and you kind of get used to that where we didn't have that, you know, when we'd see ourselves in a, in a picture. Well, I think that's a double-edged sword yeah. because I think they're constantly taking selfies and they are looking at themselves and they're too picking critical. Picking on a part. Picking well, a that's part. True. And yeah. that bothers me a lot. I always say, get off that thing. You you look beautiful. There's no reason. Every angle, you're not, you know, not some uh, yeah, body who's true. in Hollywood. And I I mm-hmm. think we we have to be happy with our body shape and not worry about it. I'm, I'm wor- I always worry about shaming somebody because they're either too thin or too heavy. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Waste yeah. of time. Yeah. Now, Jean, tell me about the activities that, that you're, aging but dangerous yeah, offers. I'm dying to hear this. Well, we're not, you know, we were doing all kinds of things. I mean, we had, uh, you know, I'm a skydiver. We had um, martini jump skydives every year. We had, Have you done that? No, that's, that's fun, though. I, I think that might yeah. be a cool well, thing. Well, you're, I mean, you'd be amazed at how many women want it's on their bucket list. I mean, we had a hundred and seven on our first one we had 107 women from the age 50 to 80 jumping out of an airplane all day long (laughs) from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night i mean it was so fabulous and uh it was covered by all the national tv stations and everything but you know and then we had fashion shows we had colonoscopy party we had all kinds of (laughs) things going on i heard about this tell us about the colonoscopy party what exactly is that well we rented rooms out the hotel and the people that signed up that wanted um that it was colonoscopy month. So Suzanne, oh, that's good. That's important. Started it. And, you know, so they signed up and everybody took it, the drink together. <laughs> yeah. We had it all decorated and the potty and, you know, in the middle of the table and flowers and their drink and everything. And, um, and then they stayed and we had sponsors and they stayed at the hotel. And then we went to the hotel the next morning and we had limos that took them to their appointments and we sat with them and we actually saved a life. Well, this that's woman wonderful. Who's, her mother died from colon cancer and mm-hmm. she was scared to death to go get checked. And she went through that. They checked her and they found polyps and they and were going to take them out. Terrific. Wow. That's incredible. So, I love but yeah, that. I mean, it was a fun party and it's funny <laughs> because I had, I, I love martinis. And so I had, you know, I had just checked with the doctor a few weeks before and I said, you know, can you, can you put vodka in the, that drink, you know, that you have oh to God, drink? That drink and he said, so yeah, terrible. as long as you don't do it too much, you don't get right. sick or anything. <laughs> right. so this That's one a of good our, way to do I it. I guess he wasn't a party pooper. <laughs> oh, very good, Jim. <laughs> so one of these women was walking around with this big martini, that, you know, glass. And I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, she's got that. She's got a, you know, vodka in there. She's drinking it, but she didn't. So, but yeah, I mean, it was just fun. But then, and then we were starting chapters and it it was very, very important to us to have education, uh, educational going on. I, the reason we started ABD was because, but you're talking 14 years ago, the woman turning 50 years old, 14 years ago was just absolutely hysterical about turning 50. They were so upset. But when you think about it in, in, you know, in our generation, that it's, you know, back then, you know, women were, they, when they were 50, they were, uh, Old. their kids, well, their kids were in right. already going to college where mm-hmm. now a lot of the young right. women uh, that are turning fit, my daughter's 54, she still has two teenagers at home. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was really different back then, but it was very important to us to get those women off the couch, out mm-hmm. the door right. and, and to share secrets and to, or not secrets, but to share Talk. things that they were experiencing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just, you know, I mean, we had doctors that talked about, um, you know, like, you know, the urinary incontinence. I mean, and I did a podcast just the, or not a podcast. I did a, um, um, little inspiration. I do these martini chats on Friday afternoon and I, you know, held up a depends and I started talking about fecal in- incontinence and a lot of these women, I couldn't believe how they got back to me and they didn't know about it. My doctor said, you've got to talk about that because women yep. do not realize that's an age thing. They think they've got cancer. They think they're dying. I mean, it's just horrible. So I we just did a that. TikTok. Uh, we just had a sponsor. We, we did uh, on, always. Yeah. On adult yeah, And we did well. it. And I think it was very, 
very effective. We got a lot of following. Yeah, on it's it. interesting because there's so much taboo around those subjects. So it's yeah. really important for you and other people with to a presence. It out. It's not embarrassing. It. It's 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 yeah. something. It's yeah. a part of life. Yeah. I mean, we talked about vibrators. We talked right. about you yeah. know all kinds exactly. of things. Exactly. And now, do you only locally? Uh, is this uh, organization a local uh, thing in Chicago or Minneapolis? Or oh, no, no. Or is, well, no. Or we're is it all, all over, over the country? We're all over oh, the world. Oh, it's just not the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. No, we're followed by all kinds of countries. I mean, oh, we're, terrific. We have two hundred thousand followers, and they're all over everywhere. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of old people looking for looking for companionship and understanding. Yeah. I think a lot of times what I say to Kimmy, you, it's very hard for a young 20 year old to put themselves in the mind of a 50 or 60 year old, even oh, yeah. though we've all gone through the experiences at that age. You know, it's hard on both sides. It's hard yeah. for us to understand you and it's hard for you to understand where we're coming from. So you're doing right. a great service, Jean. It's terrific. Right. Well, well, thank you. And um I'm actually writing a book. It's supposed okay. to come out in December. And uh, we have a title yet. Well, it's going to be Aging But Dangerous. Okay. Okay. And uh, and I'm going to put my age on there. And no, I'm why going not? To We're happy. Tell all. I'm going right. to tell all. Tell all. It's all good. Secrets. Um, also, like it's amazing that you have age, aging but dangerous to work on for women who like don't have a career um how important do you think it is at least to have like hobbies or create some sort of routine or schedule for yourself they've got to do it i mean i've been out doing you know speeches and stuff and it's like that i suggest that they go and they get an appointment book and they write down in that book you know meet somebody for coffee or i'm going to read a book from two to four o'clock or you know just put some things down in writing that they can open that book up and that they can see that they have things planned they've got to plan things i mean they they've got to just they can't just sit there and not do anything i mean right. even if they're going to exercise or they're going to walk or they're going to you know put it in your appointment book right. and have that to look at but Make yeah I really, yeah i really believe in um you know and the bucket list i think a bucket list is so important i to me it's critical and that's another reason i have to live a long time because i have a long a list lot of things left to my on my bucket list but that's why you could share with us well, I want to go to culinary school. You know, I love to cook. I want to go, um, you know, I still want to, you know, I definitely want to keep skydiving. I want to do, um, I want to do that uh, hang gliding. There's a place in Minnesota. She likes adventure. Yeah. <laughs> there's a adventure. place in Minnesota that you can, uh, that they teach you how to hang glide, even though there's no mountains here or anything. But um, I, yeah, I really would love to do that. And then just, there's just so many things. Mm -hmm so many things i had a and, bucket list too but mine was more on traveling right mine really i always wanted to go to india it was definitely on my bucket list we did it um they were oh, certain good. yeah i mean you know i had certain adventures that i wanted to yeah. do and sites yeah. to see that i had studied about for all the mm -hmm. years that i was in school and then married with children and that i never had a chance to really do the one thing i i didn't do and i'm not going to do it now because it's just too long i wanted to always go to new zealand and australia and that's just, I don't know what I do there now, because I thought I would go scuba diving. Well, that's actually a really good point of like, at some level, uh, at some age, of course, you have to actually think about right. like, maybe inside you could feel 10 years old, but, but like I your body do does age. Right. Um, right. And illnesses, unfortunately, come up and you have more th hurdles to go over. So then um, how does that kind of play a role? Well, uh, you know, my doctor says, I have this young doctor, mm -hmm. she's like 58. <laughs> And she said, you have to realize, I mean, I don't care how good you look. I don't care how healthy you feel. I don't care how mentally strong you are. Everything is still aging inside. Mm -hmm. Your lungs are getting older. Your heart's getting older. Everything's getting older. And I happen to be very lucky that I'm so healthy. Uh, but she good, said, good. you know, it's like you just you have to you, know, you have you to know your limitations. That's what yeah. I, you know at, at every age. But now, as long as you know it and you can yeah. be happy with it, you know what? So now I, I read a book or I watch it on on Discovery Channel. The thing I might have wanted to you do. Sometimes you think the limitations could be in your head because, like, you oh, probably yeah. think, "Oh, I can't go skydiving," but like 
Jean is living an example that you I can. I probably could go. Right. Do I desire to do it? Right. I mean, I have a different yeah. bucket list. I yeah. think, every, you know, if uh, it was something that really stuck in my mind that I really wanted, I yeah. think you have to try it. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, your expectations become different. Uh, you know, at 20, what your expectation is, is not the same as when you're 50, 60 or 80. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's all right. You live with different expectations. Yeah. Well, yeah, and my dad skydived with me when he was 91. Wow. Good for him. It's like George and, Bush Sr. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, you know, I would go and talk to these people sometimes in these uh, older older people in these communities. Homes. And that some of them, you know, were like 80, in their 80s and just couldn't move hardly. And I would always talk about my dad because I do talk about him a lot. He had was so positive and... Um, he just, to do with it. And, you know, they're proving right now with all the tests that that the mental, you know, mental is so is important. Really, yeah. What it's all, you know, so much of it is up there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he was. Um, so I, you know, I don't I happen to be one of these people that I really don't think about age. I just don't think about it. And, and I think that you're okay. So, uh, you know, I could go into all kinds of stuff, but we don't have time, but I, I think where you are at a certain age is what is compelling and what is, you know, affects you mentally. Like when I was 30 years old, I, Michelle was two and I was losing a baby and it was a horrible way to lose a baby. And, um, and I remember getting up on my 30th birthday and looking in the, in the mirror and going like, now I know what they mean when they say, I feel like I'm a hundred years old. I now, it wasn't that lost. I thought I looked bad and it wasn't the fact that I was upset about turning 30. It right. was the circumstances I was right. going through on my birthday that was just awful. And, and same thing happened at 40 and then 50 was fabulous and 60, you know, yeah, so every stage. Happened. Yeah. But it's, so I think it's, a, I've never been an age person and I'm still not. And then, and I don't know about you, Gail, but I, people will say to me, you know, I just can't believe you're 82. You don't look like you're 82. And I'm like, well, what is 82 supposed to look, look like? Right. This yeah. is 82. See, you know, that's a perception. Is, it's a perception. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, you have to, whatever you look like is what you should be. It's, it's, yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do and with it. And it's anything. like, no, I just, you know, and I had cataract surgery when I was 80. And I ended up with 20, 20 vision afterwards. Right. Yeah. That's Very a miracle. Unusual. Well, that's an, that's a miracle have, procedure actually. Well, but I didn't have to have lens in or anything. I just happened to have the kind oh. of eyes that I could that, just take the film off. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so he, and I'd never had, I mean, I wore glasses, I wore contacts. So, you know, it's like 80 years old and I have 20, I mean, I actually remember seeing, you know, the little age spots on my hands and going like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's really cool. And I would look at my magnifying mirror and I would think, oh my gosh, I love, yeah. I love being able to see what's going on because when you see your, I sell makeup and when you see your, you know, your face, really see it you can work with it and you can do things so I mean I somebody wrote me the other day and they said you know I can't believe I'm going to have cataract surgery and I said well come on it's you know you're like going to be able to see better so exactly. don't go there you know that's I an old there. joke yeah. <laughs> that that as you get older you can't see so well so everybody looks better oh, yeah. because <laughs> you know you have most people do develop cataracts as they get into their 70s or 80s but yeah. you know what it's wonderful it's a miracle it's a miracle mm -hmm. surgery it's great well, well, it is. And it's, it's, uh, but I, I, get, I actually get, I've been doing this for so long that I actually get really upset with people when they complain about their age. I'm not, I'm not very patient. Really. I had a call this morning. The only thing that uh, Gina is going to, the only thing that makes me laugh is I have a girlfriend spoke to me this morning and I, uh, she said, what are you doing? And I said, I have this podcast this afternoon. She said, well, I don't know. What are you wearing? I said, first of all, don't worry. It's a hundred degrees here. I'm wearing a, a sleeveless shirt. I'm not thinking about what I'm wearing. She said, well, I went to a store yesterday and she said, there's nothing for me to buy. Everything is for young people. I said, well, that's why people go into their closets <laughs> and their best things are what they might have worn a couple of years ago. I'm watching things on television, on QVC and HSN, and I'm buying the pants and the shirts from there. And they are catering to a clientele that are not perhaps 20, 30, 40, and 50. They're, they're really catering to an older group. And I love it. And it looks great. 
And there's no effort. There's no shame. Because you go into the stores many a time today, and it really is for you, Kim. I don't know, Jean. Is that do you find that to be your experience? No, no, oh, I good don't. For you. And I, I tell you, I do. I have another little uh, Facebook page that I do, you know, with my makeup and stuff. And I, I actually on Friday mornings, I do a little modeling, fifteen minutes modeling clothes from Chico's. Oh well, all right. So that's the same type of thing. Uh, I want to know, like, some easy things that you do every day just to make sure that you're like living life to the fullest and living a healthy and dangerous life? Well, I happen to be very lucky because I do have um, this huge following and I, uh, I do these, um, I do, I do quite a few interviews and then I, and I had a radio show for four years here on Saturday mornings, my partner and I, uh, but I, I'm very lucky because I, on ABD, you know, I do a little inspirational talk on Monday mornings, and then I actually do a, um, a makeup tutorial sometime during the week. It's not ever a certain time. And then on Fridays, I do a martini chat, and I interview yes. people. I interviewed Friday, this man that is uh, how to live to 100, and he was very interesting and talked about all the new tests and everything that they're doing now to, you know, that make people live longer. But uh, so I have a lot going on and I'm writing a book and I'm right. starting a jewelry line. I'm designing a jewelry line. And I, so I, I am very lucky. Uh, She's and, atypical. But, this is not typical, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> but it's back to that same thing that I was talking to you about. We have to, right. you know, I, I don't like that word. We have to reinvent ourselves or we have to any of that. I don't like that because. I don't reinvent myself. I'm the same as I was when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. but I, you know, it, it, you just got to find something, you know, that you like to do something in life that you feel good about, you know, whether it's, you know, charity, you know, no matter what it is, you just got to find it and nobody can do it for you. You know, it's just, and I give that lecture all the time. It's like, you gotta, you gotta find it yourself. You can't sit around and you know, wait for it to come to you. You have to go out there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just so important to be. And, and so I do, I do a lot of meditation. I do meditation and, um, and, and I walk and I, but like I say, I'm a little bit different than most people because I have so much going on mm -hmm. that I stay very busy and I don't, I get up at like four o'clock in the morning. Cause I don't require a lot of sleep, but, uh, I, and I go to bed early though. I go to bed by nine, but it's so I just am, and I'm not really hyper, but I'm just busy and got a lot to do. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's great. What are your thoughts on having future plans, especially when you, you know, get older? Cause I know my grandma has like a, well, I have a little philosophy that I always share with my husband. Let's not get a small tree because I, I don't want to be, I want to see it fully grown. I'm not waiting. I'm not doing a five-year plan for a tree. So I think at different stage, but it only applies to certain things at different stages of my life. I want immediate satisfaction, whether it be uh, a flower garden or a, um, I, I don't know what, what else it would be because I don't have that many things that I am anxious about, but uh, I think you want to, put all the things together. You want to do it. You don't wait till tomorrow to do what you should be doing today. That's right. really the, really the message that I believe in. Yes, um, and uh, that's, that's my plan. I'm not going to worry about what's going to happen six months from now, because who knows, I could get off a bus and get hit by a, a car. Right. So right. I think you have to live in the moment. That's yes. really what I'm saying. Well, you do. And that's hard for some people. Yeah, but, that's yeah, true. And then, and then just never look back. You know, you just can't right. go back to all those things that you, and I always say to young people, the exciting thing about growing older is that you can go back and look at your life and the things that happened to you that you thought were so traumatic were like the best things that happened because, I mean, I was traumatized moving up to Minneapolis from St. Louis. I was getting ready to open up my second clothing store and I was just traumatized. But when I look back on it, our daughter was in the middle of seventh grade and she, I would have lost her, I think. I mean, because I was working 12 hours a day and she, you know, it was the best thing that happened to us mm -hmm. and our family. Right. But at the time, I couldn't see it at all. So when you get older, you look back on those things and you just think, oh, my God, thank you, God, that happened. Because mm -hmm. if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here where I am today. Right. So right. that's kind of fun, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. Hindsight is twenty twenty. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So true. speaking of cataracts. Yeah. Um, so I want to end the episode with a game that we play with all of our guests called Grandma Gail's old fashioned dating quiz. So we will- I don't know if Jean is, is, is it's like asking me, but we can we can certainly see how her reaction is and what she would say today versus what it was when we were get, when we were dating. So we'll go through some hypotheticals. Um, so would you rather receive a call or a text from the person you're dating? If it's just to say hi, call, would you go home with somebody on the first date and like potentially sleep together? No dating apps, or would you rather be fixed up by a friend fixed up by a friend? Uh, would you move in together before getting engaged or wait until you are engaged or married to live together? I think move in together. See, when we got married there, you just didn't dare do that. I mean, yeah. I was from a small town. I mean, my, my mother would have had a heart attack and <laughs> died if I would, if we would have moved in together. Yeah. There's no such thing as that. But you've changed your tune on that then. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and who should pay for the date? Should it be like the guy or should you alternate or split? I think you should split. Okay. okay. So actually half and half, half, and half. half and half. I think that our marriage has been so successful is that uh, I pay for my stuff. I'm very independent and I don't want to be able to pay for my stuff. And then uh, I think it's just funny because um, uh, we were at, at, I don't know where, Menards the other day and we were buying two chairs to go to this concert to sit outside. So Mike was buying a chair, I was buying a chair. And this you know, woman that checked us out, she says, well, how come you're not on the same? You know, And I said, because he's buying his, I'm buying mine. She said, well, that's really weird. And I said, no, we just do that. You know, and she said, well, you know, I'm divorced. She says, maybe if I would have started out, that <laughs> would have been. but you know, money, money gets to be a lot of a problem in a lot of relationships. So I just think starting out, uh, you know, like that dating and everything just, yeah, split. And then you don't feel obligated and you don't feel, you know, like you owe anything. I anybody. always say sex and money, biggest fights you ever have in a marriage. <laughs> so that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Jean, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell all of our listeners. You're how inspirational, they can... by the way. Yes, Jean. for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, just your outlook for any age. Um, how can people follow you and find your Facebook group? Well, it is um, agingwithdangerous.com is our uh, Facebook page. Um, and then they can they can sign up for our newsletter and, you know, see what's going on you know there um and we're you know i'm sure that we're going to you know eventually get back to doing some things but it's still kind of tough with covid yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah thank you for being with us gene hope you guys liked the episode with gene she's an inspiration <laughs> and people listening who are younger you should tell your grandparents about her as well because they might want to be included in some of her organized activities Thanks for coming and listening to us once again. We are on TikTok and Instagram as well at Excuse My Grandma. And we'll see you next week. Bye.